Welcome to lecture four, part C. This is just gonna be a short demonstration video showing you how to reformat some financial statements. I've chosen the company Gale Pacific who are listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. The reason I've chosen to reformat their financial statements is that I've done some ratio analysis in the background and there was a few things that made me interested in this company's valuation. So I thought that would be a good one to go through the reformatting and then I'll follow through and do some valuation models with that as we go through the semester. We might uncover an interesting company, an interesting investment opportunity if we're lucky. Okay, the first thing I've done in reformatting the financial statements of Gale Pacific is I have gone and downloaded a couple years worth of their annual reports. For your assignment, you need to reformat at least five years of annual report data. I've chosen to do four years of annual report data for this example. I've opened up Excel and the first thing I've had to do is a relatively straightforward, a little bit boring and tedious chore. We have to get all the information from the financial statements into our Excel spreadsheet. We're not going to use a database to just download all the data because database providers will uh, sometimes do some things with the numbers that they present. They might group things together that we don't want grouped together or they might split apart numbers that we want as a certain um, number consistent throughout time. So unfortunately, the first step is a little bit of a tedious one. We have to open up the financial statements for each year and we have to enter that information into Excel. So what I've got here is the balance sheet for Gale Pacific Limited from 2016 all the way up to 2019. All I've done here is I've opened up their annual report. So for example, here I've got the 2019 annual report for Gale Pacific and I've gone to their balance sheet and I've had to enter in all the data. So I've started with my assets, current assets, cash and cash equivalents of 29 million and I've popped that cash 29 million into Excel. So that's our first step is simply entering the data into Excel. I've done this for the balance sheet for 2016 to 2019, just entered it in exactly how it is on their financial statement. I've also gone and done that for their income statement as well. So for example, revenues, sales revenue in 2019, 149,000. If I go up here to their income statement, their revenue sale of goods was 149,217. This spreadsheet will be available for you to have a look through. I've put some little helpful notes along the way about why I've done certain things, how I've done it. Okay, let's start with reformatting the balance sheet. So here, all I've got is the information from Gale Pacific's annual reports from 2016 up to 2019, and I've just typed in all the balance sheet data. When I wanna reformat the balance sheet, I'm gonna use this information and remove some accounts around to reformat it. So if we remember back to reformatting the balance sheet, our goal is to separate operating and financing activities apart from each other. And for the balance sheet reformatting, we don't have to do any calculations. All we're doing is rearranging the numbers around. So let's click over to the reformatted balance sheet that I've prepared. Reformatted balance sheet for Gale Pacific 2016 to 2019. I've now changed the headings a little bit. I've started by saying current operating assets, non-current operating assets, current operating liabilities, non-current operating liabilities. And for Gale Pacific, the only difference here, and I've put a little note here, from the current operating liabilities and the non-current operating liabilities, I've had to remove their borrowings because borrowings were the only financing activity they actually had. This business didn't seem to have any financing assets. They only had financing liabilities. So I've removed borrowings from the current operating liabilities and I've removed borrowings from the non-current operating liabilities. And now I can calculate my net operating assets, NOA, net operating assets. All I've had to do is I have said current operating assets plus non-current operating assets minus my current operating liabilities minus non-current liabilities. I've done that for each year and that gives me my NOA. Okay, next up, I'm gonna look at the financing activities of the business. Gale Pacific only had current borrowings and non-current borrowings that I've classified as financing activities. Everything else was part of their operations. So I've put financing assets here and put zeros just in case your company has financing assets so you can still see how the formulas work. But in this case, we've got zeros along here. I can then calculate my NFO, net financial obligations, which is all my financial liabilities minus any financial assets gives me my net financial obligations. How much do I owe, in this case, the bank for the borrowings that we've got? And I've got that for each year. 
The final step of the reformatted balance sheet is to calculate the total equity. I've used the formula NOA, net operating assets, minus NFO, net financial obligations equals equity, NOA minus NFO equals equity, and I then check manually that it's the same as what was reported in my original balance sheet. So I'm gonna use 2019's information here. As I've calculated my equity, NOA minus NFO gives me equity. It is the same number, 90,197, that I entered in to my original equity number on the prior unformatted balance sheet. So reformatting the balance sheet is pretty easy. I have to enter the balance sheet into Excel. I then go through each individual account and figure out which accounts have interest associated with them. If there's interest associated with them, such as borrowings, I classify them as financing items. If there's no interest associated with them, such as receivables, inventories, and prepayments, I classify them as part of the operations. Cash can be a little bit tricky. Most of the time we record cash as an operating asset. Do check the notes to the financial statements for your firm though. They, might, they may have a lot of cash in a term deposit earning interest, which you could then pull out as a financing asset that will generate financing revenue as well. So check the notes to your financial statements, although most of us will just have cash as an operating asset. Next, we're gonna reformat the income statement. So here I have the income statement. I've just typed it all in directly from the financial statements. I haven't done any reformatting yet. So I've put in the revenues, the expenses, calculated profit before income tax. We've then got our tax expense. To do the reformatting, we go through every item, every account line by line, Sales revenue is part of our operations. Other income. Well, we're gonna to have to check the notes to the financial statement to see what this other income is. And I've done that, and for Gale Pacific, it's the sale of scrap produce. So it's part of their operations. It's not a financing interest income. All of these expenses here would be classified as part of the operations of the business, except their finance costs. The finance costs would be associated with the interest they have to pay. So we're gonna classify that as a financing activity. Then we get down to income tax expense, and that's the tricky one. The tax expense is both partly operating and financing. We have to pay tax on our operations, our profitable operations, but our financing costs lower our tax, so it actually lowers our expense. So the income tax expense has to be broken up into two parts. So let's look at our reformatted income statement. I've opened up the reformatted income statement and my first tip for doing the reformatted income statement is to start with the financing activities first. So I'm coming down here to our financing revenue. Gale Pacific had no financing assets and I couldn't see any financing revenue. So it's zeros the whole way along. Your company may have financing revenue though. Then I've got our financing expenses and I calculate a net financial expense before tax. My finance expense minus the finance revenue equals a net financial expense before tax. This business in 2019, they lost $1.8 million because of their financing decisions. That would have then lowered their profit, which means they have to pay less tax. So what we're gonna do is calculate what's called a tax shield. It can also be called a tax benefit. The tax shield says that this business made a 1,842 loss because of its interest. And because it's an expense, it lowers the amount of profit we have to pay. And in Australia, the tax rate is 30% for companies. So the loss that we have made on our financing activities times the 30% tax rate gives us what's called the tax shield. It is the amount we are saving on our tax by having this financing loss, how much less tax we have to pay because we've got this interest expense. So we can then calculate our net financial expense after tax. My financing expense was this much, but because that's an expense and it lowered my profit, it saved me 552 in tax. So my net financial expense after tax, before tax expense, minus the tax shield, gives me the net financial expense after tax. After we've calculated the NFEAT, we can then go up to our operating section of the income statement. So up here, I've got my operating revenues and operating expenses, and I calculate my net operating profit before tax. My revenues minus my operating expenses gives me my net operating profit before tax. 
Also on the income statement, we had a tax expense which was given to us of 2010. Now that is the actual tax expense, but because our financing costs lowered our tax expense by that tax shield, we know that if we didn't have those financing costs, our tax on operations would have actually been higher. So this is the tax expense reported, but the tax expense that we would have actually had to pay on our operations if we did not have that financing loss, we would have to add the tax shield to the tax expense. So I've called this tax on operations. This number here is how much tax we would have had to pay if we weren't making that loss, which was saving us some tax from financing. So the tax expense plus the tax shield is how much tax we would have to pay on our operations if we didn't have the financing loss. So I can now calculate my net operating profit after tax or NOPAT. Operating revenues minus operating expenses gives me my profit before tax. Then I minus off the tax on operations to get the NOPAT figure. We can finish off the reformatting now. I've calculated NOPAT, I've calculated NFEAT, so I can calculate the net profit and check it all works out. Net profit is equal to NOPAT minus NFEAT. So I calculate it here, and then I also need to go back and check, did we actually earn 9,198 profit? I would look back at my original income statement for 2019. Yes, my net profit after tax was 9,198. I need to check that that's correct. After reformatting the income statement, the total profit doesn't change. We've just allocated some of the numbers either to operating or financing, but the total net profit stays the same. We then have our other comprehensive income, which we can add on to get comprehensive income. And that finishes our reformatted income statement. Okay, finishing it all off and making sure that we can calculate our free cash flows. Step one of the reformatting process, which I've actually left to the last bit, is to calculate our comprehensive income and our D, which is payments to our shareholders. We, using the 2019 data here, we take our opening equity balance, which is 2018's closing shareholders equity. We then get our comprehensive income number from our profit and loss statement. And we've got our closing equity number. With all this information, I could then calculate the total amount paid to shareholders. So what I've done here is I've used the formula, owner's equity this year is equal to last year's owner's equity plus comprehensive income minus off the dividend, uh, minus the payments to shareholders equals the closing equity. So I've used that formula. Alternatively, you can look at the statement of changes in equity and you'll be able to find the actual payments to shareholders that the company has made. So if we open up here, the opening 2018 equity, 87,480, 87,480 here. The closing equity is 90,197, 90,197. They've got the comprehensive income of 10,979. And then transactions with owners in their capacity as owners, that is, D, the payments to shareholders, we can add up these amounts to figure out that in total, they've made 8,262 payments to shareholders. Okay, so it nets off both dividends we've paid out and any shares we've sold and received back as well. Okay, so once we've calculated this payments to shareholders, we can then do our free cash flow calculations to finish things off. Free cash flow gets calculated two ways. We first calculate it with using our operations as one method. So free cash flow is equal to no PAT. No PAT was on our reformatted income statement. Minus changes in NOA. NOA is the net operating assets on our reformatted balance sheet. Changes in that means this year's NOA minus last year's NOA. Okay. And the alternative way of doing it, free cash flow equals net financial expense after tax. That's pretty much how much interest we've paid during the year minus changes in NFO, how much debt have we either raised or borrowed, plus any payments to shareholders, minus changes in ownership interests, and Gale Pacific had no changes in ownership interests. Okay, very clear to calculate these form uh, formulas. We need to make sure under both methods we get the same answer, because that'll tell us if we've made a mistake if we're getting the wrong answers. Okay, as you go through this spreadsheet, I've got all the formulas in there, so you can go and check where all the cells are. When you do the reformatting yourself, you might find it's better to put all your reformatted statements into one particular tab. 
uh, so you don't have to switch between all the Excel worksheets. I've put them in separate tabs to make it nice and clear so you can find what you need. But when you're doing it for your assignment, you might find it easier to have everything on one on one particular sheet. But do, do what works best for you. Thank you.